One of the questions I'm frequently asked about learning in 3D is how can you create a 3D environment that's better or more effective than a 2D environment? So let's look at an example comparing a 2D and a 3D lesson and see what the differences might be. So let's look at and find out what's the big deal? Why is 3D really more effective than providing content in just a flat 2D environment, an environment that we're all used to with 2D synchronous learning systems. First, let me talk about what is a 3D system and how does it really work. Well, it's kind of a combination. It's a combination of synchronous learning environment, which means you're live there with an instructor interacting at the same time. It's also a combination of the web 2.0. Why? because you can create content in a 3D environment, in this case Second Life, but other 3D environments allow you to do that as well. And it's a 3D interface, so it allows you to walk around objects, look at objects, and get close-ups. And finally, it's a combination also with a social networking tool, a tool that allows you to find out who else is online, to work with others, to co-collaborate, and to create content that is meaningful among two or more people. So we're going to start this little demonstration with the view of training sales reps about new features of a drill that's being introduced. And this image shows kind of the typical way a lot of people are thinking about Second Life or other 3D environments. You simply create a classroom environment, slap some PowerPoints up virtually, and allow everybody to come together as an avatar. And really, I'm not sure that's the best way to look at a 3D environment and really hold training in that. If you're going to do it that way, you might as well do it in a 2D environment. So to start a 2D process, probably people would come into the, to the space, the virtual classroom, with disembodied names. You may know some of them, chat with them or not chat with them. Once the instructor got everybody settled down and started, he or she would talk about maybe the features of this new drill, point to them with a pointer, use maybe the whiteboard features, and kind of show, okay, these are the new features of the drill. I want you to be aware of them. You have to know about them. And these are what we're going to discuss today. The 2D drill gives you some idea of what it looks like. And then some student might say, or some sales rep might say, well, how do I set this up in a big box store? What does the display look like? And a good instructor may have anticipated that question. And will say, here, here's a slide showing the setup of the store. Let me show you what it looks like. The learner might have said, yeah, that's great. But can you give me a closer view? I want to see really it close up because um, I have a question about really the exact placement. And again, a good instructor would have anticipated that question and would have had a 2D picture ready to show the setup of the drills and what needs to be done to make sure the drills are displayed in the best light possible in the store. Now, a student might have said, well, what about a bigger store or a smaller store? Or I only deal with mom and pop stores. The instructor might not have a picture for every store, but could kind of describe how the setup would be different. A really effective instructor would even have a group exercise and use some of the great group technologies, the breakout rooms and the 2D environments to have the students take these elements that are shown on a PowerPoint slide and ask the students to kind of drag them into the proper display. Maybe the students are required to set up a display. So the instructor would say, hey, drag these to where they need to be so that you can do this as a group. And then we'll get back together and discuss the various displays. And when the instructor debriefed, here might be an example of a really effective display that the students set up. They dragged all the pieces into the right place. And the instructor can then describe the value of putting the pieces in a certain place and where the boxes go and where the header goes. And then if somebody says, but I did it for a smaller store or a bigger store, the instructor can work with that information and show them how that's done. Now let's look at a synchronous 3D environment. So before class, one of the classmates says, hey, hey, Abbott, you got to get in here. We're looking at these drills for a contest to find out what the pieces are 
that are different from the old drills. I know it's before class and class really hasn't officially started, but let's walk around these drills, let's see what the features are, and let's see if we can win that contest. And instantly, the learners are collaborating together in the same space to try to accomplish a goal. Now, if during that process, one of the participants stops to check his mail and wants to see what's going on outside of the 3D environment, the fellow learners could instantly find out because his avatar would fall asleep. So rather than on a, with a, just a name on the left-hand side of most 2D environments where you don't know if somebody stepped out or not or if they actually put the stepped out icon up there, as soon as Abbott steps out here, his avatar is going to fall asleep and you're going to know that he's not participating in the 3D environment. When class starts, the instructor can then send a message out and have everybody teleport to the same place to begin the instruction. In this case, the instruction involves trying to find the features of the drill, the ones that they didn't find before class or actually already did find before class. Repetition is a good instructional strategy. As they fly around a giant drill, they're trying to find the red flags that indicate new features in the Model Z drill versus previous models of the drill. This is an interactive exercise where the groups can work together trying to find where all the features are. It gives them some spatial context of where the features are related to one another and allows them a very vivid visual image of what they should be looking at and how the new drill is going to look. A learner then may ask a question about, well, what does it look like on a display and can you show me different displays? The instructor then can teleport the learners to another location. In this case, the location is a big box store and the learners can walk right up to the display and look at how it's set up. They can walk behind the display, in front of the display. They can even get a close up if they want to. Here, the avatar for Abbott wants to look a little more closely at how things are arranged. He hits mouse look and zooms right in. He can walk all the way around the display and if it's correctly set up just as it's set up in the real world, he can even look behind at the fasteners and the other things and make a mental note of how that was set up, even if the class is looking at something else or going in a different direction. As a final exercise, the instructor may ask the attendees of the course to set up a three-dimensional display. Just like we had the two-dimensional display in the 2D world, here's a three-dimensional display. And the avatars can actually grab things, lift them, and move them. And then later on, you can have someone who's familiar with the displays, an expert in that, come along and actually evaluate all the different teams' displays. And they can work together and co-create the displays just as they would in the actual environment. Again, if the avatar wants to get a closer look at the supplies or what he or she will be using to set up a display, they can simply zoom right in, see that material, grab it, and put it on the shelf as they were setting up the display. And that's an illustration of the difference between a flat world view and a three-dimensional view for learning, training, and academia. This presentation was created by Carl Kopp, Professor of Instructional Technology at Bloomsburg University and author of Gadgets, Games, and Gizmos for Learning, Transferring Knowledge and Know-How from the Boomers to the Gamers.